بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله الحمد يوافي نعمه ويكافئ مزيده وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما أنفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يا كريم uh, By the grace of Allah عز وجل We come together today to discuss the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As رضي الله تعالى عنه uh, The hadith in which uh, a man came to the Prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام أن رجلا سأل رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أي الإسلام خير Which one of the aspects or the concept of Islam are the best of those concepts So uh, you know the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم replied uh, a certain reply Before we get into the reply looking at Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As رضي الله تعالى عنه as the narrator of the hadith Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As as we, it's clear he was the son of Amr ibn al-As. And uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As was a Sahabi, so was Amr ibn al-As, he was also a Sahabi. And the unique thing about Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As radiallahu ta'ala anhuma was the fact that he could write. And even during the lifetime of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, Abdullah he used to write. He used to write a lot from the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. And we talked about this even in the, you know, when we were discussing the sciences of hadith. Whereas Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu was known for the exact opposite. He wouldn't write, rather he would memorize. And he would rely solely on his memory. Um, and Abdullah, he used to, you know, write the same hadith that Abu Huraira would be memorizing. And that's why Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he actually said that attested to the fact that Abdullah has more hadith than Abu Hurairah himself. So narrations, probably Abu Hurairah is more. However, um, Abu Hurairah used to say that, you know, I don't know of anyone or something along these lines that has more hadith than me except Abdullah ibn Amr al-As. He used to write and I didn't used to write. And we spoke about earlier on about the fact that, uh, that this is amongst the signs that uh, the Prophet ﷺ was brought for uh, the reason, one of the reasons why the Prophet ﷺ was brought, or at least the message of the Prophet ﷺ doesn't go against what? It doesn't go against the concept of literacy, and it doesn't go against the message of literacy. Though the Prophet ﷺ himself was unlettered, unschooled, but talented. And this is amongst the beauties in an individual, rather. They say, that when you are extremely talented, then this is, uh, you know, uh, this shows that the person is innately of talent. And the Prophet ﷺ was as such. He was the most intellectual of people. And the fact that he was the most intellectual of people, Al-Qadi Iyad rahimahullah, he mentioned in his book, uh, Al-Shifa, uh, he mentioned that, uh, that this is to show that intellect, it leads to good character. And the Prophet ﷺ is being told by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he's the best in character. So he was unschooled, and being unschooled, and talented to the extent that the Prophet ﷺ was really, it's really something. It's really something. So, for those people that you know come and attack Islam and say, you know, your Prophet didn't even know how to read or write. Prophet ﷺ didn't know how to read or write, but those that read and write day and night continue to research through the sunnah of Rasulullah ﷺ and don't, are not able to reach even in the slightest the different hikam or the different wis- wisdoms that underlie in the sunnah of Rasulullah ﷺ. So this is really something, the fact that he wasn't, he was unlettered, but again his message didn't come, he was given wahi by Allah Azza wa you know, he was given understanding by Allah Azza wa Jal, but his message didn't come to go against literacy. His message didn't come to go against writing. Here is Abdullah ibn Amr al-As asking the Prophet Wasallam that should I write? He said, uktub, uktub, you know, as we talked about that before, or ista'in ala hifdika biyaminik, use your right hand to try to help you memorize the information that you attained from me. So, this is... Abdullah ibn Amr al-As in short. And one of the things that is known about Abdullah as well, is the fact that he was amongst those sahaba that used to narrate the Isra'iliyat a lot. Some sahaba were known for this. 
And this is, you know, um, needed. Why is it needed? Like this, the knowledge of who narrated Israeliyat a lot, who narrated the Israeli, uh, Israelite traditions, or uh, you know, that's how they call them. So who narrated these Israeliyat? The reason why we need to know that is because when we have a piece of information that can only come down from wahi. So for example, if the... Um, if a Sahabi says, in Jannah is this or that. Has he seen Jannah? Huh? Everybody should know the answer to this. Has he seen Jannah? The answer is no. He, or he says, in Nar is such and such. And a person that does such and such, he will be punished by such and such. In Hellfire. Has he seen Hellfire? In Dunya, if he says it, maybe out of observation he's speaking. Okay? But if he says that about Hellfire, and... Um, we know that this person is, you know, a sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Then what would happen is we would consider this type of hadith what they call marfu'un hukman. It's raised to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in ruling. Essentially, it's a statement of a sahabi, sahih. Essentially, the sahabi is saying that in Jannah is such and such, in Nar is such and such, in Hellfire is such and such, in Paradise is such and such. But what we do is we take this narration and raise it to the status of a statement of the Prophet ﷺ. Why? Because you cannot accept, expect a sahabi to make a statement through his own whim, or to fabricate a statement, or fabricate a lie in the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if it is known that this sort of subject matter can only be discussed straight from a divine source, Allah Azza wa Jal, then we, we consider this as if it's the statement of, uh, of the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ. Now, in the case of a Sahabi, where the Sahabi is known to narrate a lot of Israeliyat, like the case of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, it does not decrease from his status in the least, what I'm saying. So, um, you know, because it's okay, it's permissible, legal, Islamically, to uh, narrate uh, Israeliyat, so long as it doesn't go against the shara of Allah Um uh, so in the case of a sahabi like Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As, if he says a statement of this sort, such sort, then we'll have to, you know, ponder that statement more. We can't just take it at face value and say this could be this is the statement of the Prophet because likely it could have been a statement from amongst the Israeliyat, and we don't attribute those to the Prophet and we don't negate the authenticity of those statements unless or until they go into contradiction, direct contradiction with. Uh, you know, uh, textual passages from the Quran or the Sunnah. طيب. A man asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, "Ayu al-Islam khair? Which one? Which actions, O Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam? Which part of Islam is considered the best part? And over here, this shows you that the Sahaba were always aiming for the best." They're always aiming for the best. A man came to the Prophet ﷺ, he's asking, what is the best thing in Islam? You know, another man would come to the Prophet ﷺ, ask him, what is the peak of Islam? Another man would come to the Prophet ﷺ, and he would ask him, you know, a similar question. So, over here, this shows that it goes against basically what we do in our own societies. What do we do in our own societies? Huh? Sorry? Yeah, but I'm referring to, you know, in, co- in contrast to the statement of the Sahabi. The best of dunya, that is true as well. But if we go to a shaykh, for example, how to resolve or dissolve the situation better yet? How to just... What's the easiest way out? What's the easiest way out? What's the easiest way out? And... So is this just a sunnah? You know, just a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Yeah, it's just a sunnah of your dear Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. You know, um, is it merely liked to do this, or do I have to do this? You know. Um, but here is a Sahabi. He's not, and and you see this as a recurring theme in the lives of the Sahaba. They wouldn't come to the Prophet 
Rarely ever do you find it. And you do find it. You do find it, but not as often as we do it. Rarely ever do you find where a sahabi came to the Prophet ﷺ and he asked him, you know, uh, a certain question or the Prophet ﷺ advised the sahabi to do something and he would say, is it a command or Prophet of Allah or is it just your own personal advice? The Prophet ﷺ would say, it's a personal advice. He said, no, in that case I'll follow such and such. You know. <coughs> um, like in that case of the man who, uh, the slave boy, who uh, his wife, Barira, his wife, uh, you know, sought her freedom. She became free uh, through Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. And she was married to the slave boy. And the Prophet sallallahu and I think I believe Abu Bakr, if I'm not mistaken, was walking, they were walking. And as they were walking, you know, you, 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 there, was, there was a very interesting sight. Barira and her, his wife, they're walking. And this man says to his wife, he's trying to get back with her. And the wife is now free. So she doesn't want to remain under a slave boy. Okay, and she doesn't want to particularly remain under this particular slave boy. So the Prophet ﷺ, he looked at Abu Bakr, have you seen, do you not get shocked at the love of this man for his wife and the hatred of his wife towards this man? He was speaking to Abu Bakr and he said this. So later on, the slave boy came to the Prophet ﷺ and he said, you know, I you know, love my wife, this, that, and I want to stay with her. Long story short, and I'm rephrasing, paraphrasing, and um, uh, rephrasing. And uh, so the Prophet ﷺ, he recommended to this woman, almost like intercession on behalf of the Prophet ﷺ, to this woman, said, you know, why don't you just get back with your husband? So she said to the Prophet ﷺ at that point, is it a command from you, O Prophet of Allah? Because if it was a commandment, right away, no questions asked. This is a Sahabi or a Sahabiyya. Right away, they would implement Anything that the Prophet ﷺ said. You know, a lot of statements that are actually mustahab. By the way, this is a, something to note. A lot of statements that are actually statements that are merely liked. Okay? They're merely liked. And I use the word merely in comparison to obligation. Otherwise, it's not the best word to use here. You know, a lot of statements that are uh, actions that are merely liked. In essence, they're actually commandments of the Prophet ﷺ. But for a reason or another, they, you know, there was some sort of a deflecting inference that caused the obligation to be deflected. That's the reason why it wouldn't be considered an obligation. Otherwise, it might have been a real commandment for the Prophet ﷺ. So even such a commandment, the Sahaba wouldn't ask whether it's like, you know, it's something to, we must do, something we didn't, we wouldn't. That's why this woman asked the Prophet ﷺ, is it a commandment, is it not? Is it just your own personal advice? He said, it's a personal advice. So then the woman said, is it, in that case, O Prophet of Allah, I'm going to, I'm going to divorce this man. So, you know, th- these are the type of, you know, experiences or type of situations where they would go and find out whether it's an obligation upon them. Whereas the essential or the, the innate attitude of them towards the Prophet ﷺ was that right away, سَمْعًا وَطَاعًا We heard, we're gonna obey. Whatever we hear from the Prophet ﷺ, we'll obey. So, he said, أَيُّ الْإِسْلَامِ خير? Which one of the Islam, or concepts in Islam, are the best? The Prophet ﷺ, he said, تُطْعِمُ الطَّعَامَ That you feed food to. وَتَقْرَأُ السَّلَامَ And also that you send salam to. Alaman araft upon that the person that you know, and upon those that you don't. Upon those that you know, and upon those that you don't. Here is the Prophet wasallam saying that you know sending salam, sending salam to those you know and those that you know not is one of the best actions in Islam. It's one of the best actions in Islam. How many different times do we go by a person and just walk as if we never even saw him? Assalamu I have a story. Huh? A tangent. 
from your salamu alaykum. I remember this from you. So everybody, pat Saif on his back. <laughs> so uh, I remember this story from Saif, salamu alaykum. And this is a beautiful thing. And Allah's Prophet وسلم, used to say, أَلَا أَدُلُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ شَيْءٍ إِذَا فَعَلْتُمُهُ تَحَابَبْتُمْ أَفْشُ السَّلَامَ بَيْنَكُمْ Should I not tell you of something? If you were to do, you'd what? You'd start to love each other. If you want to bring the ummah together, if you want to bring the ummah together back to life so that we can really physically feel, or not physically, we can feel the, the emotion of unity amongst the ummah, then one of the ways that the Prophet ﷺ is saying is what? Is to put to start spreading salam. Afshu salama baynakum. Spread salam from you know amongst each other. Now, one day I was driving in a place without mentioning the name of a place. I was driving, and as I was driving, um, or I might have been in the passenger seat. I was in a car, and I parked. We parked at a light. And there was this old man with a big beard. He started honking. And he looked at us and he opened his window. Now usually when such a thing occurs, what do you think it's, uh, that's happening? He wants, directions. he wants directions. He wants to know where to go. And I'm not even from this place. I don't live here. I don't know anything about this place. I was just traveling. Okay? And such was the case with the person that was driving the car. Now... You know, we opened the window, because I was on the passenger side, now I remember clearly. We opened the window, and I said, Salaamu Alaikum. I go, Salaamu Alaikum, Kif Haraq, Allah Sallamak, you know, the whole nine yards. And I gave it away, you know. You know, it was probably somewhere in Saudi Arabia. <laughs> now, the, the, the guy, he said, Wa Alaikum as Wa Rahmatullah. Actually, no, he said, As Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah. So now, I'm standing there, and the light is gone green. There's no one behind us. It's, you know, there's no one in front of us. And I'm just waiting for the guy to tell me something. And the guy's just looking at me. He's like, you know, كيف حارك سلمك الله الله يبارك فيك. You know, the whole nine yards. So I'm like, okay. And? <laughs> you know, so the guy looked at me. He said, nothing. I was just trying to implement the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And wallahi, the type of love that fell in my heart for this person was just amazing. Because you didn't do this for any other reason except to implement the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And with that being said, we'll stop the class for the day.